Today's episode of DRL is brought to you by Hella Cocktail Company. My guests don't just come to DRL for me. They also come for the cocktails. Luckily, my friends at Hella Cocktail Company have my back. These guys make amazing mixes from Bloody Mary to Margarita to Moscow Mule. They also make cocktail bitters, my secret ingredient, and now yours too. It's easy to feel like the best bartender in town when every bottle comes with a simple recipe on it. Hella Cocktail Company, bold flavor, real ingredients, hospitality. Mixing it up since 2011. Shop the collection on Amazon Prime or use code DRL online at hellacocktail.co for free shipping. Hello, my lovely listeners. Welcome back to another episode of DRL, where we're talking everything dating, relationships, and love. I'm your host, Tanisha Wood. I'm back in New York, and I'm here with my friend, Danae. Hey, y'all. Hi, Danae. How are you? I am great. How are you? Do you know that in my phone under your name, it says it says your name, Danae, D-E-N-E, but in parentheses, I have pronounced Den A. <laughs> <laughs> it works like you would be amazed i've been dean denny like so if it works I'm yeah so the first it. time i met you when i put it in there i was like let me just write that correctly because i could see myself being like den no. <laughs> denny <laughs> it's me i answer to it all so last time that i caught up with you dating wise you were on was it tinder or bumble bumble, bumble. bumble. And you were seeing a couple different people. Yes. You were seeing kind of a younger man. He will not go away. Oh, so you're still seeing him. I wouldn't say I'm seeing him. Okay. Well, let's talk about that. Also, you were seeing another guy that lived in Maine. Yep. Not seeing him either. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, tell us about you. Um. So I am 37. I've been doing the New York thing for about four years and... I am from New Orleans originally. Nolens. Nolens all day. The 504. Go Saints. <laughs> but I grew up mostly in North Carolina. So I love the Tar Heels. I bleed blue. Um, and work brought me to New York. So it's been great. I've learned a lot about myself. I've grown a lot. Like before moving here, I would never, ever, ever, ever go out to a restaurant by myself. To have really? A meal. No. Why? Was that like a taboo thing back in Nolens? Well, I don't, I don't know. It just made me feel bad about myself, like to go to a restaurant and eat by myself. Like, I just felt bad. Now, is that in North Carolina, like a weird thing for people or women in particular to go eat by themselves? Like, why was that such? You like, just don't a, really see it. You're either with friends or with a significant other or parents, you know, like you're never really alone. So I just didn't feel comfortable doing that. Like, I felt like something was wrong with me. If I'm eating a meal by myself, like, do you not have a friend that you could go <laughs> eat food with? Like, why are you doing this by yourself? But since being here, like, I have no problem doing it. I actually enjoy it sometimes. So what got you to that space and to being comfortable just dining alone? As, as simple as that sounds, I think it represents something much deeper. But like, what got you to that place and comfortable? I think I just realized that I was going to miss out on a lot of things if I didn't take the initial step to do something by myself. So I live in Harlem and there are tons of restaurants. And one day I just decided, you know what, I can do this. So I took a book because I felt like that would be, you know, a little. This is my person, <laughs> this author. Right. It was a little comforting. So I had a book. I sat at the bar. I didn't get a table by myself. I was like small steps. So I sat <laughs> at the bar. I had a book and I just ordered a drink and then I ordered a meal and it was fine. Did it feel awkward for you that first time? Oh, absolutely. Like I thought everybody was looking at me. Like literally in this restaurant, you're like, everybody in this restaurant is staring at me, just wondering what I'm doing here alone. Oh, absolutely. Nobody cared. Like nobody gave two shits about me eating by myself. In our minds, it sends this message of like, I don't have friends. I don't have people. I don't have this. I don't have that. But I'm like, we do. But it's also okay just to be out and be alone and that there's nothing wrong with that. Right. And it took a, a while to get there because I, I had all of those feelings like, dang, you don't have like a guy that can take you out or that you can go out with. 
or you have friends. Why can't you call one of them? Like, this looks pathetic. Like, that's kind of how I felt about myself. But when I got there, like, after I realized people weren't looking at me, like, I kind of relaxed. I let my guard down a little bit, and I had a really nice meal. I chatted with the bartender or somebody that sat next to me, and it was totally fine. And I was so proud of myself after that. And, like, I look forward to it now. Like, <laughs> I take myself out quite regularly. Because, I take myself out on amazing dates. Because I love me. Like, <laughs> I've been with me for 37 years, and I am happy and good with who I am. Like, not every day, not all, you know. But for the most part, like, I love who I've become. And I deserve to take myself out. So I will go have a nice meal by myself, actually sit at a table. I'll leave the book. And I will just be. Oh, I love that. A lot, a lot of people are there. You'd be surprised at how many people are still just really uncomfortable and not even out in public. I mean, just like spending time alone with their own thoughts, even if it's just in a park or at their house, like that scares people to actually be alone. But the older that I've gotten, the more that I've realized it's so important just to like be with you with nobody else's like thoughts or preconceived notions or anything else around just like I'm here with me and that's it there's no expectation there's no so then my friends are coming after I'm here for an hour it's just it's just me and like I'm cool with that I love it now like I really really do um I want to say maybe maybe this year I even took it one step further and I went to a movie by myself I love that how was that I mean, I felt really weird. (laughs) I felt really weird. What felt weird about it? Just walking in and because I even went at night. Like it wasn't like a matinee. (laughs) You're like, like, I took it to the extreme. I was like, if I'm going to do this, like I'm going to go. And so it was like a Saturday or a Friday night. So it's date night. So everybody is like paired up or has a friend, but very few people go to a movie by themselves on a Friday or Saturday night. Right. So I was like, this is weird, but you know what? I'm gonna get the popcorn. I don't have to worry about sharing with anybody. <laughs> like, if I want to eat all of it, I will. I went and it was fine. Like, I missed having that person to talk to, like, sometimes during. Are it. you the person that talks in the movie? I mean, maybe. No, no, it's completely fine. I am. Like, if you're a person that likes really to pay, like, close attention to movies, I'm not the person to go with because I'm the person that'll tap you like, what's going to happen? Why did he just go in that room? Like we just saw the thing. And like, there are some people that are super like just hardcore movie buffs and connoisseurs. And they're like, shh, shh. And I'm like, no, I'm I'm just one. Why did they do that? That's crazy. Right. (laughs) Like I have to, I have to comment. (laughs) Oh, I have a comment too. So maybe we should go to the movies together. I'd be like, you didn't watch any of it. No, but I saw the scenes and commented on the ones right. I wanted to. <laughs> and so that's what I missed, like having that person to be like, hey, what do you think is going to happen? Or like, why would he do that? <laughs> so that was hard. But but overall, like a liberating experience. Absolutely. It was great. And I was like, again, I can do this by myself. Like, I don't want to navigate w- the rest of my life alone, but I'm fine with where I am right now. Like, I don't have to go to dinner or to have drinks with somebody. I am perfectly fine doing it by myself. So coming from the South, like Louisiana, North Carolina, how has it been in New York, like dating here? Hard. Like dating in a big city, I feel like is totally different than dating in the South. So I grew up mostly, right, in North Carolina. So I had long-term relationships. I'm talking like three, five, seven years, like long. And this like, I assume some of this is in your 20s. Yes. Yeah, so my high school boyfriend and I, we started dating, let's call it end of our junior year through our junior year of college. So junior wait, year of high school through junior year of college. So this is 11, 12, freshman, sophomore. So five years. Five years. Five pretty big years that's too long when you're that age i'm sorry it just is but that's the norm like and at that time you couldn't have told me i wasn't marrying him so when you started dating him in high school did Mm -hmm. you mark this as like so this is going to be my husband oh yeah oh i had that already like i had children's names picked out (laughs) susan j quellen no (laughs) a a ron a a ron (laughs) That's from Key and Peele. For those of you who haven't seen it, <laughs> please watch that episode. I was saying, you need to watch it immediately. <laughs> so did you like tell this to your family? It was to the point like we would all go like on vacations together. 
I went to the beach with his family. He would come over like and just and walk so in the both house. families were like, okay, this is gonna be it. Yeah, like this is this is normal. Like there's nothing odd. So about nobody this. ever said like, hey, you haven't even really finished college yet. No, you're not. Figure out like let's see what happens after college and where your mind's at. Then you might just be a high school thing. No, really, because at that time I really never thought I was leaving North Carolina. People always say like. You know, maybe we need to get back to those like traditions where, you know, it was in like when people thought like, you know, you meet the person in high school or college. And in my mind, I've always thought, no, you don't know what else is out there. But now like talking to you, I'm understanding how that can be perpetuated through like family and the people around you when everybody's like, oh, yeah, like this is yeah, this is it. This is fine. Like we went to the same elementary school. We went to the same high school. Um, our colleges were like 30 minutes apart. Like we were very much like just in. Did you plan your college like that? No. So I actually applied to college in New York. I thought I wanted to go to NYU. We came up for like an orientation. And as soon as we went to the school and we stepped out of a classroom, I was like, this isn't for me because the city welcomed me. And I was like, I need a campus. Like it just wasn't what I envisioned. for. (laughs) Where are the campus boundaries? Like, I don't Washington Square Park. What is that a campus boundary? I don't understand. Like, where can people not come into? Where can I go? Where can I be like safe and secluded, like in this little perfect square? Like that, <laughs> that's what I thought I needed. And I probably did need it. Like I needed a graduated approach to be in New York. Coming from Winston-Salem, renamed after two cigarettes. I mean, it is not <laughs> big. <laughs> Wait, is that really what the names are? Well, RJ I mean, Reynolds, I know yeah. there's Winston's, but is it really after like tobacco? Yeah. Like RJ Reynolds was a, a big player in the tobacco industry and they were centered in Winston-Salem. Wow. Never knew that. So <laughs> I didn't ever put that together. We're not, it's not big. I mean, it's fine. It's growing now. But if I'd have left Winston-Salem to go to NYU, I would have turned right around and come home <laughs> crying. And I'm back. I'm done. One semester, I'm out. Like, I just, I know the 18-year-old version of me. So where did you end up going to school? UNC Chapel Hill. Go Heels. Which is not far from Winston-Salem. Hour and a half. Got it. Two hours with traffic. But you felt like you needed that time to sort of transition. Yes. It was a perfect distance. So if I needed something, I could get home. My mom could get to me. But she wasn't close enough to be, like, in the neighborhood and stop by. Got it. And at this point, when you started college, you very much thought, I'm still with the person I'm going to end up with. Like we're going to get married after college. Oh, I was going to be married at 25, have my first kid at 28 and figure the rest out. And here I am, 37, not married, no children. (laughs) Okay. So what (laughs) happened in between then and now? How did you and dude like break up? Like what happened there with, with high school dude? So I think what it was is I started to realize that I was missing something. So I was like, oh, I haven't done all of these other things. Let me go out and try. So we broke up our junior year of college. We kind of was like, okay, let's see what's out there. He dated somebody else. I dated other people. And then I was like, oh, my goodness, I want you. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm with somebody else now. Heartbreaking. That was, that was a blow. Um, so after you dated somebody else, you, you thought, it was I like, actually want to yeah. be with you. After mm-hmm. seeing what else is out there, I want, the other, I want you, not the yes. other things that are out there. Yes. Okay, got it. And I remember in some very not so nice words, Mm -hmm. he told me the world does not revolve around me, which I mean, it's fair, fair. So I took it really hard, um, had to do some deep reflection, some therapy, like I had to get me right. Um, And then so we just kind of remained friends, but we didn't date again. And then I went to law school and then we kind of dipped back into that pool because they broke up and. So we found our way back to each other. Didn't last. Like people break up for reasons. Like even if the initial thought changes, why? Like it happened for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, yeah, we were young. That's why we're breaking up. There were probably fundamental differences. Yeah. That we weren't going to last or sustain. Like he's still in North Carolina. And you needed to get out. Right. So got to law school, dated a guy. He was crazy. That didn't last. But How was he crazy? Well, reading my journal, I mean, I think that's kind of crazy. Um, He literally read your journal. And quoted it back to me. (laughs) So on March 4th, 2014, you said. Essentially, 
he didn't use the date, but he's like, oh, yeah, so what? You think, because he was into golf, right? Okay, great. You be into golf. But at some point, I don't even know why I said this, but I did make a comment in my journal about him thinking he was like Tiger Woods or something. (laughs) So in an argument, he quotes back to me, oh, so you think I'm like Tiger Woods or something? And I'm like, did you know at that point? I was like, did I say that out loud? I was like, no, I wouldn't have done that. I thought that, but did I say that? So I went back and I looked in my journal. I was like, oh, sure as shit, I did write that. Did you ask him about it? Like, did you read my journal? Not in that moment, because then he did something else. So I did a study abroad in law school. And like he picked Where'd you go? I went to Italy. Hmm. Great experience. Had way too much fun. (laughs) Way too much fun. And I probably wasn't the most upstanding girlfriend when I was in Italy. Did you cheat? I mean, yes. Okay. Yes. I, I mean, wasn't, hold on. That, that's the most creative way of, of saying I cheated that I've ever heard. I wasn't the most upstanding girlfriend, but. I mean, different area code, different country. Like, <laughs> you got to cut me some slack. Like. No. 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 So, yes, I did cheat. And I did tell friends via, like, email. <laughs> You put it in writing? It's my email account. You're, he doesn't need to be in my email. Okay. I watch a lot of Lifetime investigation ID, the whole thing. The, the, if there's one thing I've learned, if you're going to do something wrong, don't put it in writing. That's it. I mean, I learned that. <laughs> I have never done it again. You're now a lawyer. You finished <laughs> law school. You understand. If you're going to do something wrong, don't put it in writing. Do not do it. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say I was so bold just to be like, yeah, you know, I slept with this other guy. Like, <laughs> that didn't actually happen, like, on paper. But I was like, oh, well, I'm hanging out with this guy, and he's really nice, and we have a good time, you know. So when he picked me up from the airport... You know, everything was a little awkward. It was awkward, but he didn't mention anything. So like a day or two later, he hands me like a printout of an email (laughs) that I supposedly (laughs) sent to one of my girlfriends. And like he redacted things, made notes. Is he a lawyer? He is. Okay. I was going to say, this sounds like an amazing legal career in the the (laughs) works. If he's not already a lawyer, I think he should be because this is great legal work. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was very thorough, but I was like, um, first of all, you crafted this email because it wasn't something that I had sent to a friend. So his whole proposition was that like one of my friends sent him an email because they were concerned about what I was doing to him while I was away. So wait, did that actually happen? No, he wrote this all. He sent himself an email like he drafted this email being like, hey, X, Y, Z, whatever name. I just want to let you know that, you know, Danae's been hanging out with this guy, ABC, while in Italy. And I think you should know. Because so was this one of your actual friends that he like made up? And so he picked a friend that I actually do have. <laughs> and and I was like, first of all, I know her. She would never, ever do this one because she doesn't even like you so she wouldn't do this like she would so be team Danae (laughs) yo the thought that went into this though while he was studying for the bar I was like dude you should be studying for the bar how do you have time to do all this while studying for the bar and he passed but wow the mind work on that like slightly crazy but also like you have a great legal mind so that's how I knew he was crazy I was like oh oh this is what you do okay Wow. Like he concocted a whole thing. And so he was trying to get you to admit to, right. okay, yeah, this did happen. Mm-hmm. So like, did even, you? No, of course not. <laughs> You're like plausible deniability. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, first of all, I never, I never told her anything. Like, so you picked the wrong friend. First of all. <laughs> Wait, is that what plausible deniability <laughs> means? Not really. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> what does that actually mean? So like, if you're going to commit a crime or have committed a crime, you're not going to tell me what you did or how you did it. So I will have plausible deniability. I can say I had no idea and be honest and truthful about it because you didn't share that information with me. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay, cool. See, we learn a lot on DRL. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, crazy. Wow. And it went like even further. Like, I think what he liked about me was my family life. So my family and I were really close. Like we have our own dysfunction, like everybody, but we're super close. Like all holidays, I talked to my mom. 
three, four times a day. So I, he was missing that in his life. So I think he really latched on to that for me. So it was Thanksgiving. We were pretty much on the outs. Like he had moved to another city. This I was, was after the breakup. Um, no, we're still kind of together. But after the Italy thing. After the Italy thing. So he found out, but. But stayed. But stayed. Okay. But stayed. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, he moved. So I was like, I'm not really going to see him every day. Like, it's fine. Like, it was easier to still be with him. Than but why to- not? Why, why didn't you break it off at that point? If clearly at this point you knew, like, this isn't somebody for me. I've seen the world. And now, like, I need something different. I think the comfort of having a boyfriend. Like, you know, somebody's better than nobody. Got it. Kind of thing. And like, we weren't seeing each other every day. So I was like, I can still do, like, have the best of both worlds. Worlds. I can still do my life and then see him when I want to see him. So it comes to Thanksgiving. He had already been talking to my mom, like outside of me, about coming down for Thanksgiving. So I'm like, okay, cool. So my mom was like, just, you know, get to North Carolina and you can ride with Danae and you can come to Winston and we'll all have, you know, Thanksgiving together. I'm like, all right, fine. So he came, I let him in my apartment and I was studying. I was in my third year of law school. Like I had things I needed to do. So when I come back, he's like on the couch and I was like, all right. So wait, he's just in in your apartment? apartment? My apartment. He's just in my apartment. Like I didn't have anything to hide. I'm like, fine, you can be in my apartment. It's whatever. So... He's laying on the couch. I'm like, okay, I'm getting ready to go to bed. So he, I was like, are you coming to bed? And he's like, no, because I'm not effing happy with you. And I was like, oh, okay. So I got in bed because like, I really did not care. So, I mean, you I were already not, done. Right, you were already have done been in a relationship with him, like at this point. So yeah. I was like, all right. And so they came in and he picked a fight about something. I don't even remember what, but I was like, yeah, this, this just isn't going to work. So he storms out. Of the apartment. I was like, okay. To come back. What did he say when he came back? Well, I mean, I figure I'll just go home with you anyway. <laughs> Guys and girls, if you storm out of somebody's apartment, you can't come back. It, at least for the dramatic effect of nothing else. Exactly. It only has the effect if you stay gone. Right. Yeah. You like if I leave, around. I'm I'm slamming a door and I'm like, I will never... And then I'm like, yeah, for the dramatic, I can't go back now. I, I no, said all that. No, you have to at least wait 24 hours. Right. Like, you can't go back within a 30-minute window. You make a whole scene, you stay gone. Yes. So he came back, went home with me for Thanksgiving, but like didn't talk to me. Like it was so awkward. And would be like, I need you to open up your Facebook account so I can see what you're doing. I was like, nope. You got the wrong one. Okay. See, here's the thing. And men, this is for men and women. Like, if you suspect something, if you feel something is not going right, don't put yourself and somebody else through all of it. Just leave. So if you see that this person is seeing somebody else, if you see that they might be cheating or they're not faithful or this or that, like, don't put yourself through the charade. Just say, okay, bye. But like doing all that and like, I'm not speaking to you, but I'm still around because you think you're sending a message of, I'm not taking this. I don't need this. I'm better than this because you're mad at this person or not talking or saying all these things to them, but you're there. So everything else that you're doing is negated by you just being there. So it doesn't make sense to stick around and be mad. Just go. If you're really trying to save face and let this person, you know, I'm not about this BS. Just go. But staying around, like, I'm not talking, and I'm throwing a fit. And just so you know I'm mad, it doesn't do anything. You're not solving anything. This person's not going to, like, now be more faithful to you. You just look like an idiot. True story. Yeah. So we broke up after that (laughs) trip, and I haven't talked to him since. So now, fast forward to now, you're Mm -hmm. in New York dating. What's happening, and what do you want? Ooh, What's happening? Um, I think dating in New York is just harder because there's so many options, like for both people. So you find somebody, you connect, and the first date or two goes perfectly fine. You have a lot in common. You laugh. It's great. But then something happens. And they're like, did they find somebody else? Because you have so many options. I had a busy summer. 
Did you have a hot girl summer? I had a, my version of a hot girl okay, summer. Okay, tell me about your version of a hot girl summer. <laughs> I was doing the most. Like, I needed to slow my roll. Um, so I dated a guy in Maine. He slid into my DM on Facebook. Um, we had, I think, two or three mutual friends. And so he sent me a message, and he was like, Facebook kept suggesting, so I figured, why not? And I was I, like, you I know I like what? the approach. Me too. I like the boldness. Me too. So I was like... Okay, I like a right. bold slide. I was like, all right. So I responded. I was like, you know what? Absolutely. Why not? Like, it's as good of a reason as any. So we started like texting back and forth. And then we started talking on the phone. And so then he was like, well, I want to meet you. And I was like, okay, like, do you really? Are you just saying this? So he was like, all right, let's do this weekend. I will come down. He got a hotel room. So it wasn't any. So like, he came down to New York from Maine. Yes. He drove down. I wouldn't think to drive, but he did. Um, he got a hotel room, so there was no added pressure of like, oh, well, can I stay with you or anything like that? He made a reservation for dinner. Like, I mean, he was very much on it. And so we met and we had a great time. Like we met at like seven-ish or so, and we stayed out to like two or three in the morning. Like we hit up a couple of different places. Like it was a lot of fun. So I was like, okay, well, maybe. So we kept talking and then I was like, all right, well, I'll go to Maine. For the weekend. Is this a white guy, black guy? White guy. Okay. Because I heard Maine and then I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I only saw a small piece of Maine. <laughs> I didn't see a whole lot of black people in Maine. <laughs> so, I mean. Had you dated, and you've dated white guys before? Yes. So, I've mostly dated white guys. Like, I've dated, like, two black guys. Really? In my life. Now, in, like, North Carolina, it's pretty diverse. Mm, not, maybe not Winston-Salem. No, okay. I've never been to Winston Salem. <laughs> well, let me rephrase it. Maybe it is, but the area that I grew up in and the schools that I went to, I was always one of a few black people. A few. Got it. So you'd sort of been dating white guys since then. Yes. Okay, got it. Like my longest relationships have all been with white guys. So this this guy in Maine wasn't like a complete like I'm trying something new. No, no, got it, not at all. Okay. But for the fact that he lived in Maine, got it. And I don't want to live in Maine <laughs> ever. Um, so I went up there. It was fine. Like we had a great time. I got a hotel room just because you know I don't really I still don't know you know you and don't know if you're a serial killer yet. Pretty much. I watch a lot of Criminal Minds and Law and Same. Order. So I don't know if you're going to like, you know, make turn me into a lamb. Don't shank me. Right. Um, And like, that's a lot of togetherness for people that don't really know each other. So if you're not cool with somebody, you might be thrown off by that, like awkward silence. Or if we just sit and watch TV and we don't always feel like we have to talk or be on. So it gave us both some time away. That's a really good idea. Like you shouldn't spend that much consecutive time with somebody that you don't know that well. Cause yeah, you're completely right. Like there's just awkward things that are not awkward once you know a person, but when you don't, it's like, so yeah. Like, do I have to entertain you right now? Right. No, I'm fine. We can just sit and watch TV. Right. So we were out at a beer garden and like we were having a great time and we're just talking and he just drops the bomb that he's an atheist like the sky is blue and i was like whoa roll so it back what, did you, roll what were it you back. guys talking about like how did he say it so he had gotten out of a relationship like eight months ago or something and i guess he was having a hard time with it so his aunt gave him something and it, it wasn't a bible but it may have been like a devotional or something religious in nature mm-hmm. and he was like you know she gave this to me And when I opened it, I just kind of rolled my eyes. And then once I got dropped off at the airport, I threw it away. And I was like, well, why did you throw it away? And he's like, well, because I'm an atheist and she knows it. I was like, excuse me? Rewind. Can we talk about this? What do you mean you're an atheist? Yeah, I'm I'm an atheist. I was like, so that's a big deal breaker for you, obviously. That is a non-negotiable for me. Like, I'm not saying you have to be Catholic or you have to be Baptist or a certain religious denomination, but I do need you to believe in a higher being. I do need you to be spiritual because I am trying to grow my faith. And so I can't be with somebody who doesn't believe in anything. Right. And is against religion. Like, I just, I can't be with that, especially because having a family is important to me. So I would like to raise my kids in a faith. 
So did you tell him that? Like as a... Not in that moment because I was still kind of... <laughs> you are like, processing? And so then after that, the weekend was still fine, but it definitely kind of took a different turn. And then when I got back here, I was just like, yeah, like I'm at the point now where I don't have to settle for that because I don't feel like that's an unreasonable ask. I, like I'm not asking that you sit with your right leg over your left and that you only eat X type of food. Like I think that's a basic foundation of a relationship for certain people right like if i were atheist then that's fine we could go forth but if i believe in you don't that's going to be an issue at least for me in a relationship so how did you break things off we stopped talking you literally just like you didn't call he didn't call and then that was it yeah that kind of how it happened so there wasn't any like conversation about what was actually happening the conversation was, I have concerns about, like, your religious beliefs. And, and then what did he say? He's like, yeah, I just, I don't believe. He couldn't really give me a definitive reason. Like, he didn't have a bad, ex- like, experience with it or anything. He just did not believe. But he also didn't owe you that. Nor did you owe him that. I mean, that is true. That, it that it is true. really, that's a situation of just, like, this is what I believe. This is what I'm on. And you or him didn't owe each other anything to change that or believe something different. It was just, we've discovered this thing and this thing doesn't match and cool. Yeah. Cause I'm really not that invested. And like, thank you for the discovery this early and not later when we're deciding on children or whatever it may be, but right. Or if I want to get married in a church and you're like, I'm not sitting foot in a church. But I think that's like, that's the beauty of dating to me is that I can discover things about you and you can discover things about me that like, don't mesh or that we don't like but that's okay and then we can move on from that right you know what i mean i think the the downside of that is when people say man i really like this person but if it weren't for their insert atheism i would totally be on board or if you know they didn't have these sorts of beliefs or do this or do that but it's like when you discover something about somebody that just is not really in line with who you are I love when it could just be like, yeah, that doesn't work for me. That doesn't work for you. And we could just move on from that. But there doesn't need to be like, so what can I do to get you to come over to my side or to get you to see who I am or why that's important? It's like, it doesn't, no. Stop forcing people to come out of who they are to to meet who you are. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And that's okay. And what is for me and who is for me will be for me. So the old me would have been like, oh, well, we can work through this or we'll keep trying or I'll change how how he feels about religion. I'm 37. I don't need to change anybody. Like I need something like someone that compliments me and I compliment them. So if this is a fundamental thing for me, then we don't need to really go too much further than this. Exactly. 100%. I don't need to waste your time. So there's also a young guy yes, that you were seeing in the interim. What's happening with him? So let's call him Young Blood. Young Blood, because <laughs> he's, he's like 12. Like he just <laughs> turned 30 in August. That's not like crazy young. You're 37. He's 30. That's not that far apart in my mind. That's not. Th- I would date right now. I'm 30. I'm, I'll be 36 in February. Woo-woo. I would date a 30 year old. I did know you were an Aquarius. Yeah. I'm an Aquarius. Yeah. I, I, would, I would date a 30 year old. Would you really? Yes. I wouldn't date anybody under 30, but I would date a 30 year old right now if they were mature. And I think that's where it is. Like, so he is fine. Like, he's really nice. Um, there are two things that I don't particularly care for. One, he's my size. I'm not big, y'all. How tall are you? 5'2. Okay. He's maybe five, two? five three. Okay. So his license says he's five six, but that is a lie. <laughs> like we are eye. Sir, to eye. why did you make that up? Like literally, like we're eye to eye. You've been seeing him for a while, so there's clearly things that you So he's fun. He's smart. Um, so we have good conversation. Like, but it's just I don't think it's there. Out like even height and outside of his stature and age, like the one of the first times we were trying to hang out, he's like, yeah, so let's hang out and call it a Saturday or Sunday. And I didn't hear from him until that day at like one. And I was like, yeah, see, that's the difference between a 29 year old then and me. 
we need plans. Like, you're not going to hit me up at one o'clock and be like, and send me a gif. Not even like, t- like a regular, hey, I was just wondering, are we still getting together tonight? Like, you sent me a gif. But I hate to say it, but that's like an, an op, like, that's not necessarily an age thing. That's more so a just maturity thing. Like, there's men now that act like that, where it's like, yeah, I'm 35 and I'm not hitting you up before plans like i'm literally hitting you up day of like what are we doing right now and yeah that's not me so that's not even necessarily an age thing okay so that's one thing i don't particularly care for about him like i need you to take the initiative like or just say hey i want to go out with you on this day would you mind like let's talk about what we want to do or something not just like hey it's one o'clock what's good what are we doing right i've already made plans by this point or if i haven't I'm not, they're not with you. Like I will take myself out. Like I'm just not doing it. So you've been seeing him now for a couple months on and off. Yes. So why are you still seeing him? If you feel like some of these things don't line up. Like I I do enjoy his company. I just don't feel pressed to, for him to be my boyfriend. Like it has no long-term potential. Like when I want something long-term from him or in general, in general, Uh, absolutely. Like that is the end goal for this dating nonsense and fiasco that I'm putting myself through. So then why date somebody who you don't see something long-term with? Because I don't really, like you say we're dating, but I don't really think we're dating. Like literally we've hung out like three times. Okay. But even still, if he doesn't seem like a long-term potential, he could be a friend. Like he could be a friend because like, he is into sports. I would actually go out and like watch football with him. Like, cause like we have fun. I just, don't really feel the need like to sleep with you or to introduce you to my parents. Like <laughs> I just don't feel like, the need I to just, integrate you into my like, future, but like you seem like a cool person. Right. So we can go out, have like some drinks, eat some wings, watch some football. I go to my house, you go to your house. So what exactly are you looking for at this point? I want somebody that is going to challenge me and definitely make me better. Um, I tend to be very like, planned and type a and like everything has to follow a course so i want somebody that breaks me out of that a little bit like that has some spontaneity about them like hey let's pack up and go on a trip because in my mind i'm like okay so where we're we going where are we staying how are we getting there like i need i need some details like so i need my person i think will push me a little bit out of that um somebody that i can build with and grow with somebody that wants to have a family because that's important to me your southern voice like it was really cute because that's important to me (laughs) it is it's the wine i promise you have a southern twang i don't know if you know that do i really yes it's like when you say certain like words or phrases you definitely have like a southern twang in there i'll take it (laughs) i I like it like i know the y'all is a dead giveaway and i still use it when i'm sending emails to my team and whatnot and they're like you're never getting rid of it it's like nope (laughs) I am keeping this y'all for the rest of my life, y'all. Y'all, all day. <laughs> but yeah, like those are just some of the things that I want. What type of men are you swiping on? So originally it was a very, it was a smaller sect of guys. Um, generally white. Um, Do you want to date black men or it's just like what? So I'm more into. Or are you just open? I am open. Like, so there's a certain, I'm not really into Asian men. Like, let's. We're going to be honest. Like, I'm not. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I am open. Why are you not open to Asian men? No judgment. Just curious. Because... I think it's a size factor. Like, I don't want to date somebody that's my size. Do you know that um, OkCupid did a study. It was probably six, maybe seven years ago now. But essentially, the two most undesirable groups. And when I say undesirable, I mean where people were generally getting less messages, less swipes, less interaction Mm -hmm. were Asian men and black women. Really? Yeah. So I, ever since then, I always thought, you know, black women and Asian men just need to get together. (laughs) I mean, maybe. (laughs) Yeah. If you can find one that's like six feet. So it's a height thing. It's a, I am definitely more attracted to taller, bigger. I mean, let's be, let's be honest. I don't need everybody my is. Size. I mean, everybody is at the end of the day, like just physically who we are as human beings. Like 
there are certain things that were generally and men, women are generally attracted to just bigger, taller men. Right. Like, I, but at the end of the day, me. let's also be honest. Most men aren't six, three. Some are, some are right. But like most men, most eligible, he's single. This is the guy men are not six, three. So like, is that something you can actually get over? Uh, maybe. Cause everybody that I've dated, like, significantly has been six feet and taller really yep oh so you're like no i've seen it happen and it's <laughs> it, happening for me happen. i'm not i'm not doing this short guy the one exception is crazy law school dude how tall was he like maybe five ten. like i mean he was on the cusp so is this on like your deal breaker list where oh no no i mean it's you're not going to be automatically <laughs> dq'd if you're <laughs> not tall um but generally, I think I get more attracted to somebody after I know them because it's not the looks that's going to sustain us. Like, I may look initially, but, like, it's how you are as a person. Like, do you make me laugh? Like, can we talk? Like, there are fundamental things, and then I become more and more attracted to you. Got it. So if somebody were your height, it wouldn't be a deal breaker necessarily. She looked at me like, I mean, I didn't say my height. I just said not 6'3". Right. I was like, we can't share clothes. (laughs) Stop wearing my stuff. (laughs) Funny story. No. So Chris doesn't have like a ton of style in my opinion. (laughs) And out of the blue one day, he had ordered these like skinny jeans with like some rips. And he he showed them Mm. to me. He was like, yeah, I thought that these would look good. And I was like... Yeah, they do look nice. They're just a bit tighter than I normally see you wear your jeans. And then Jackie, the seven-year-old, goes, why are you wearing Tanisha's pants, Papa? And I died. (laughs) And I was like, I wasn't going to say anything, but those were a little bit tight. So Jackie, Jackie, that's a good point. That those might tell aren't you mine. Those are turn. Those aren't mine. But yeah, why are you wearing Tanisha's jeans, Papa? <laughs> let's be real, Danae. If you met this guy who, let's say, he was five two, and he was literally he was five okay. two, but like the way he came at you, his family dynamic, his job, his sense of humor, like everything else was on point. Would that keep you back? I would go out at least on a date with him or two and see. Like, I would, because you never know. I just... But in the back of your mind, would that still be It would be a thing. It would be a thing. Why, though? Because he's my size. I don't know if it's a a feeling that the man should be the protector, and I don't feel very protected with somebody that's my size. Like, you can't stand behind me in a fight. (laughs) Like... But you don't know, because there's some some 6'2 dudes out there who don't even know how to throw a punch. And there's some 5'2 dudes out there who's like, yo, I could really... I could really get at you. Don't play with me. And also, Danae, how many times have you been in a fight? Never. (laughs) (laughs) Never in life. Like, that's why you can't be behind me. I'm not protecting anybody. Women say that a lot. Like, I just need to be protected. I just need this big man who is a force. And yes, that's great. And that makes sense. But when I actually talk to my friends, particularly, I'm like, Wait, how many times have you been in an actual fight where like you needed this thing to occur where it's like, and I needed the man to have my back to fight against everybody. And it's like, "Mm, I don't, you've never actually been in a fight. So like, why do you need this, this imaginary man that's like fighting your back? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. I was in undergrad and we were all out one night. And so I was dating this guy. Great guy. Um, It was during my break up from my high school boyfriend, like to, you know, kind of see what was out there. Um, He wasn't a big dude, but he was a little taller than me, but not big by any stretch of the imagination. We were out and some guy spilled a drink on me Mm -hmm. and then he proceeded to lick it off of my arm. What? So guy I was dating at the time, his response was like, oh, no, let's not do that. And, like, got a napkin to wipe it. I'm like, nah, nope. Okay, Danae, what did you want him to do? I don't know if I needed him to throw a punch, but I needed him to have a more manly response. Did that manly response need to come from him being a certain height? No, but I think it would have probably been more likely, honestly. Because it was a big dude that licked me. So you think that (laughs) 
his lack of a response came from the fact that he was smaller than the dude that did it in the first place. Yes. I honestly do. Okay. This is just me playing devil's advocate. Now let's say that this is sort of the man of your dreams in a way. He Mm -hmm. has the career you want. He's six, two, he's this, he's that right now. If I'm a man with a thriving career and I'm actually thinking through things, right? I might look at this situation and I might be like, well, okay, so here's what's going to happen. If I hit this dude, Mm -hmm. if I punch this dude, if I come at him in a certain way, he could maybe, let's say he's a lawyer. He could report me to the bar association and maybe that's a violation. And now I've lost my license. He could punch me and then I punch him back. And then somehow that comes back on me because people here might be his friends and not tell the truth about what's really happening. And now there's my career or now there's this, there's that. Right. Mm -hmm. So if this is a level headed man, he might actually look at the situation and be like, you know what? Let me squash it in the moment. Like, let me be like, dude, don't do that and move on. And we get out of here. And that's the night. Right. Cause it might be, it might take a very hot headed dude with a temper to be like, you know what? That's my girl. Boom. And then it's like, yo, that was that you just you just lost your license to practice law. I mean, in theory, yes. You know what I mean? Like now, you know, what I mean? like you're being charged with assault. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, though, in our minds, I think as women, we have this thing where it's like, I just want to be with somebody that protects me. Protecting you might involve more than just physically defending you it might be let's not do x y and z so that the consequences don't happen that could so that we are in fact very protected yes but i never said he had to swing on him i just needed him to do more than be like oh no and like start wiping up my arm like i need you to do a little more not swing on what did you want in an ideal world what did you want him to do so step between at a minimum step between the guy and me and be like, dude, let you know, like, that's not cool. Let's not go here. Like, you don't need to be licking my girl. Like, fair, like express some type of displeasure or inappropriateness with your actions and then be like, all right, come on, let's just go or whatever. Like, you don't have to swing on them, but you do need to be like, that's not cool. This is my girl. I can't have you licking her. Like, right. Right. And I understand that. Like that's and not I, and how I, this is going to happen and in I my would presence. Ex- and I would expect a similar response. But yes, I, I just am at that time where I'm like, I don't want you reacting off of your emotion. I want you to think through it. Like, and I agree. Like, I don't think anybody would lose their license over a fight because some lawyers have done some real shady things <laughs> more than more so than swinging. But at least set the boundary that this is not acceptable. You're not doing this to my girlfriend, wife, whatever. Like, I'm going to protect my home my my life i understand that and yeah at some point you have to be like all right it's not worth like going to jail or risking our future but in this instance like we're not throwing you know we're not gonna get into a fist fight but just say not this is not acceptable we're not gonna allow this to happen right and then we can keep it pushing we can leave i don't care but just to be like oh he just shrugged it off like, you could do whatever you want, man. Right. To, I'll just pat it off. It's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. Got it. Because it's it. not fine. You're right. That's not fine. That's no. not fine. And he I understand. <laughs> he didn't happen because that was small, though. He, that happened because he, he just, just didn't, didn't know how right. to stand up for his in a Absolutely. way that made sense. Yeah. So you are thinking about freezing your eggs. I am. What brought that about? Well, because having a family is important to me and... I'm not set on it having to be my kids, but I don't want to not have that option. Like, I know there are so many kids that need a good home, so adoption is always on the table, but I don't want to completely negate my option of having children of my own. So it's like an insurance policy. I think I owe it to myself, I owe it to my future husband, my future kids to at least look into it and see if it's something I can do. And if I can, then I will. Would you ever have a kid alone? Like if it came down to it and you didn't meet the person, would you 
unfreeze and inseminate those eggs just by yourself? I think I would, but I don't think I would do it in New York. I don't think I have the support system here. A lot of my really close friends live in Atlanta and they have a built in network and support system. So if, you know, one of the moms is caught at a meeting or something happens, our flight is delayed and can't get to the kids and the husband isn't there, one of the girlfriends steps in. Mm -hmm. And we'll go and pick up the kid from school or daycare and watch them until they get home. So I have people here that could do that, but not not a village. And I do believe it takes a village. So got it. I think it would be a struggle for me to do it here. Okay, I have a really personal question from you, but as somebody from coming from the same place. So you have a lot of friends that are married and have kids. Those are like your closest friends. So I know a lot of your closest friends and they are either in really long-term relationships or they're married and have kids their first, second, yep. maybe trying for a third child. Yes. So how, how do you function in that friend group being that you're in a different position? Like you are like, I'm single, I'm trying to meet the one. How mm-hmm. does it work in that friendship? And, and what are those dynamics like? One thing that I love and cherish so much about that friend group is that we're all very, very supportive of each other. The support comes in different ways, but I would be lying if I didn't say sometimes, you know, I feel sad about like my situation because I am the only one that's not in any type of relationship. Like three are married with kids, two are in long-term relationships, and I am the single one. So sometimes I'm like, well, dang, like I don't want to show up and not have a plus one. So it's taken a lot of growth for me. Mm -hmm. To be like, you know what, I am here because the person that is meant for me is going to be so great and better than I ever imagined. And I just have to wait a little longer. But do you ever think about too, just like the freedom and benefit in that? Sometimes not necessarily with that group, but I have another really, really good friend and she is married, has two kids and her married life is less than ideal. Right. Right. So sometimes when we're talking and she's like, oh, I have to do this or I'm leaving work to go to my second job. I'm like, yeah, I don't have to. I'm going home and having a glass of wine. Just me. Yep, just (laughs) exactly. And I'm like, you know what? I would rather be in my shoes right now than in hers. Right. Like just because you're married and have kids and that is the ideal, whatever that is, like. Doesn't mean you're happy. Does not mean you're happy. And so I will take my rosé. (laughs) <laughs> and, and my Netflix or my Law and Order all day over that situation. I see both sides of it too. I have a lot of friends here who are very single, very like, let's get out, let's see what's up, mm-hmm. let's do this, let's do that. And then I have other friends, both like in Minnesota and just all over that, have been married for a long time, have children, and have a very settled down life. And like, I love that I get to see all sides yes. of it. And to be honest, like, my married friends with children have really been the people that have humbled me in terms of a life of, of children and marriage. Right. Mm -hmm. I think previously to really getting real with them and talking to them about like their daily lives and seeing it firsthand in some cases, I think that I had maybe sort of a, a fantasized idea of children and marriage and what it is. Right. It's almost like everything is better. It's like, yeah, this is your person now. And like, here it is. And like, ah, field of dream. Mm -hmm. But in really like one experiencing children for myself that aren't necessarily mine, but just experiencing it like day in, day out. Right. And then also like seeing it with other people and experiencing like, not from them, like experiencing like what marriage might be like and the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Like I see it in a very real way now. Right. So I don't necessarily see all the sugar coated, like here's the wedding and here's the bridesmaids and the flowers. Like I see it in a very real way. And so sometimes I'm seeing like, I know y'all two hate each other some days. Like I know you literally don't want to be around this person. And so I really do weigh all of it now. Like I literally look at, all of it. And I'm mm-hmm. like, there are some days where these children will literally make you question everything in life and you will just not like them. Yes. Same with this man. Like, yes. this is how it is. Like, understand the reality of it. Under Fully grasp what the reality is 
And understand that some days it is amazing. And some days you'll be like, why would I ever want anything other than this? And understand that some days you will be like, why am I here? Why am I doing this? And be able to know that that's what it is, that it's an up and a down and Mm -hmm. every day is different. But don't think, I think the disappointment from marriage and from children comes from when people go into it with this whole idea of perfection. Like, I am just going to love these children every day. They are perfect. They are mine. I am going to love this. Ma- like, or, or that's going to make them and complete them. Right. And it's not. No. It's not the truth. And so what I encourage myself to do, as well as my single friends, is like look at the whole picture of what marriage and children are and understand that just like being single, some days you're like, I'm going out on five dates today. Yes. I am having a hot girl summer. And then some days you're sitting in your apartment like, why am I doing this alone again? Again, I yes. can't remember. Yes. But every avenue that you choose, one is not better than the other. They're simply different. And great things come with one and not so great things come with that same one. And But understand each path before you take it. Like understand that like, you're not going to love this man every day. That wedding was perfect, but that doesn't mean the marriage is going to be perfect. Like you love your children, but that doesn't mean every day you're, you're not going to like be like, why did I do that? Like, Mm -hmm. and I've talked to enough people and that is what I love about this podcast because I've had a range of views and I understand that like every day is different and no path is perfect. But before taking any particular path, I would just encourage people to fully as much as they can. Like if you're not married, you're not going to a hundred percent understand the in and outs of marriage in and outs of marriage, nor with children. But I encourage you to seek it out as much as you can to spend time around married couples, Mm -hmm. to spend time around children. When I say time, I don't mean like, let me hold him for 10 minutes. Oh, cute. Here you go. Like time, like spend weeks with a child. Yes. Spend weeks around a married couple and you'll see things and you'll understand more like, yes, that is for me. It's worth everything that I see. It's worth the risk. It's worth the sacrifice. Or, oh, well, now that I really saw that, I don't think that's for me. So just expose yourself to different sorts of relationships before you commit to one type of relationship. Like the other really great thing about my friend groups like the mamacitas and my other like friends everybody's very honest with each other like sometimes like brutally honest so you know social media you get the highlight reel nobody posts that yeah my husband's beating me or cheating on me like nobody posts that and if they do i raise an eyebrow or two i'm like right this isn't your journal you you shouldn't post you shouldn't put this out there for everybody um but they're very real so like yeah i love him but you know what? Things are hard. Every day I don't like him. Or some days I look at him like, uh, what are you doing? You going to pick this baby up? Like I'm trying to do X, Y, and Z. So it's, it's very real. And I try to tell myself that I'm here for a reason to enjoy it while I'm here because some of them would trade places with me in an instant mm-hmm. to be able 100%. to sleep in on a Saturday and not have to go to dance or, you know, do X, Y, and Z um, just to have some alone time, like to go to the bathroom by yourself and not have somebody say, mommy, what you, you know doing? How many like, I just can't even pee alone. <laughs> right? like, like, so it's a given thing. Things you like, take for granted. You're like, pee alone. You can't pee alone. <laughs> like, like I'm already looking forward to sleeping in tomorrow. Like what? <laughs> like I don't have to be anywhere till 11. Like I got this. Not when, you know, your kids wake up at 6.30 saying, I'm hungry, what's for breakfast? Coffee. Can you go make some? Because mommy could use a cup. So, like, nothing's going to be ideal, and I recognize that. It's just I am looking forward to having some of that, like, in whatever shape that it takes, whether it's a lifelong partner and we never get married, but like, or I'm a single mom, like, whatever it may be, I think... Not, I don't think. I know I'm ready for and I want more than just me in my right, life. Right. So 
So however it looks, like I'm open. I, I don't, I surpassed, you know, being 25 and married and 28 with my first child. Like, so it's whatever, <laughs> it's whatever it looks like now, like to just be open to it and see where it takes me. But I like that you have a diverse group of friends in terms of where they are in their marriage and children and being single and dating just to kind of see the full gamut of, okay, I see the pros and cons of it all. So when I'm making the decision to be with somebody or get mm-hmm. married, it's not a blind decision. Right. It's like, no, I've, I'm seeing all sides of this and this is still what I'm choosing. Like, I think that's the beauty of being older and yes. getting into a relationship or marriage or children. It's, it's a choice. It's a deliberate choice. Like I know no, at this point, I know, I know, and I've seen it. And this is what I'm choosing based on everything that I've seen. And I'm a more evolved slash better person than I was back then. Like if I'd have married high school boyfriend, I would. Oh God, no one should marry their high school boyfriend. I keep telling people, don't get married till you're 30. I will be. That is I the minimum age requirement. I would be divorced if I married that person. Right. I am not the same person at all. So what's next for you? I, you know what? I'm really trying to figure it out. So I'm toying with the idea of making the transition from government to private sector. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always said New York wasn't my forever. So I'm just going to sit and be still for a little bit um, and figure out the best place for me in the next step. So if the man who is for you might be out there and happen to be listening, what does he need to know about you? Always thoughtful over like expense. So I'd rather some th- somebody do something that's more thoughtful than however much it costs. So get to know me, and you probably won't go wrong. I like it. And always root for Carolina. <laughs> I'm not a sports person, so I'm like, okay, whatever on that part. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Can people reach out to you? What's your Instagram? I would love it. So I am ddavis2182. So slide in, say hi. Is your birthday February 1st, 1982? <laughs> yes. Yes. I love purple. That's a hint. So always send purple gifts. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, is that a sports thing? Okay. So you just love purple, the color. The color. But you hate red. And it's red. our birth zone. And I, yes, I hate red. I remember that about you. <laughs> Never, ever send red roses. That's what else you need to know. I remember or any, that. Or any red flower. Like I just. She hates red. I loves don't purple, like red. Hates red. Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank this you has for been great. Me. I'm like, it was funny because when I was coming here, I was like, why have I never had Danae on? She needs to come on. <laughs> well, I'm glad we could do well, this. Well, thanks again. And thank you guys so much for listening today. Please reach out to me at Tanisha Wood on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And until next time, wish me love. Hello again, my lovely listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of DRL. If you like the show, be sure to go on iTunes and leave a rating and also write a review. And don't forget to share with your friends and tell them all about DRL. Thank you so much for supporting.